Hey YouTube, welcome back to Dwayne's World. So in order for today's video to even have become a reality, a lot of things needed to go right. And the fact that now you're watching this video should obviously give you that answer. You wanna find out what I'm talking about? You better stay tuned. All right, so yeah, absolutely, a lot of things went right for me this week, and really what I'm referring to is my Toro Greens Master 1000. Now, if you haven't watched my more recent video on that particular mower, please go back and take a look at it because it's gonna answer a lot of the questions as far as why I'm even in possession of a Toro Greens Master, but I'm very proud to say that I am an owner of one now, and it's definitely proven to be a fabulous mower up to this point. Now, why I say that this video may not have ever happened was really contingent on how well the actual mower did perform and what work it would be required in order to bring it up to the standard in order to get a good quality cut, which we were able to do, which I showed you guys in that first video. All right, so when I got the mower home, I was absolutely ecstatic. I couldn't wait to start jumping into it and start working on that mower. Now, the old Dwayne of before Dwayne's world would have just started ordering parts, started working on the mower, cleaning it up and getting stuff done. But now that I have a YouTube channel, I wanted to just pump the brakes for a second and say, you know what, what can I record here? What do I not need to record? So there's certain things I didn't put on video. Like I didn't put washing the mower on video or changing the spark plug or even changing the oil. And if those are all things you may have wanted to see, I'd like to know that and drop that in the comments below because that's something I can do for future videos. But outside of that, one of the first things I wanted to do even before I touched a motor was I really wanted to evaluate the reel and bed knife and really evaluate whether or not they were salvageable and whether or not I could backlap it back to life. And that's what this video is about today is the backlapping of the Greens Master 1000, which I was very happy to say worked out phenomenally. Now, if it didn't work out and I needed a new reel and I needed a new bed knife and I needed just a lot of work to happen on this mower, this video probably would have never been published because of the fact that it was a failure and ultimately it didn't work. So I'm glad to say that that wasn't the reality. The reality now is that it works and it cuts great. So I wanna show you guys the process and how I was able to bring the reel and bed knife back to life with just simply a backlap. So as I'm putting together this backlapping video and I'm thinking about all the backlapping I've done in the past with different mowers, you know, I've backlapped McLean's and California trimmers and even true cuts. And now I can add the Toro Greens Master to that list. And it's because of the previous experience that I had, and this is the point I just wanna stress, is because of the fact that I've worked on those other mowers and I kind of thought about it, the process is the same as it relates to each of those different manufacturers. And the only thing that's different from manufacturer to manufacturer is how you set the reel to bed knife. So meaning if you own a McLean, but now you wanna maybe look at a California trimmer and you're gonna do a backlap on it, the process isn't that different once you understand how to set the reel to bed knife. And this was extremely important as it related to the Toro Greens Master, just because I understood what a backlap should look like. And the only thing I needed to figure out was how to adjust the reel. And once I did that, I was good to go. Because video one, and you guys saw it, and if you haven't, take a look at it. You know, I had such a phenomenal result with using this mower after I've done all the things I've done to it. I had to put this video out now uh, showing you the backlap. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and let's go down to the backlap. All right, so let me show you guys what you're gonna need in order to complete a backlap on a Greens Master 1000. What I was very excited to see was that the Greens Master 1000 does not require any specialty tools. All you need is a drill and a half inch adapter. As you can see, I already have mounted on the front of my drill. The other thing I'm gonna go with, which I normally do is both an 80 grit and a 120 grit compound along with the paintbrush to be able to apply it to the reel. And that's really all you're gonna need from an equipment standpoint to get your Greens Master 1000 backlapped. And with that, let's get on to the video. All right, so one of the first things I'm gonna do, I've already tested the reel to bed knife clearance with paper, and it's really not cl cutting, and it's or it's not really cutting clean. So as you could tell, obviously it needs a backlap. It's in pretty rough shape. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my shim gauge here that I also used during my cow trimmer video and this shim is 0.13 millimeters. Now, I don't know the exact standard that this mower should be set to. So regardless of what the factory spec is, which I don't know if it's uh, 0.10 millimeters, I think it's something along those lines. The purpose in using the shim isn't to tell whether or not I'm actually at that 0.10 spec. It's just to ensure that my reel to bed knife clearance is the same on the left and the right. So if I kind of just run this through here, I can get that through there and it looks like I got pretty 
consistent contact all the way through where I don't necessarily feel that there is more resistance on one side than the other. I think I'm happy with that. That way when I go to backlap the reel, I ensure the same amount of material is coming off of one side and the other, and I'm not necessarily damaging the reel in any way. All right, and with that, let's go ahead and get onto the backlap. All right, so one of the things I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a page out of the Lawn Insider's uh, playbook when it comes to uh, how he backlapped his Greens Master 1000 on his YouTube channel. One of the things that he did to allow the backlapping compound to work more effectively to start is he went ahead and loosened the reel to bed knife clearance. He basically took the reel to bed knife adjustment here and he turned it four clicks uh, to loosen it. And he kept track of the number of clicks. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna loosen this side four clicks and I'm gonna loosen that side four clicks. As we're going through the process of backlapping, I'm gonna keep track of those clicks and I'm gonna go ahead and re-tighten the reel with the lapping compound in different sessions of the backlapping. I hope that makes sense. So we're gonna go ahead and start backing this off by four clicks. One, two, three, four. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. One, two, three, four. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my 80 grit compound and I'm gonna go ahead and just start brushing on the compound. And I'm not going for cleanliness here, I'm just kind of going and definitely gonna douse the reel uh, with enough compound to cover each of the blades. And this is just to get it started. And then afterwards I'll paint uh, the compound on as it's spinning. Definitely feels different. Never have sharpened this many blades on a reel. So definitely awesome. Now, one of the things I've noticed right now, as I'm painting this compound and you hear it grinding against the, the bed knife, it's very tight, overly tight. So what I'm gonna do before I start spinning this is I'm going to loosen the contact even more. So again, I keep just keeping track of the number of clicks. I already have four clicks on there and I wanna keep track of where I'm at. What I'm probably do is I'm gonna back it off maybe two more clicks, three more clicks, we'll see, maybe three. Okay. And it definitely feels better. Although I probably wanna go with one more, to be honest, maybe even two more. So if you keep a track, <laughs> hopefully you are. So all right, so if you keep a track, this has been seven clicks. So we're gonna probably go like two more. So now we're about nine clicks. Still a little tight, but I think I'm gonna give that a try.
So it's been about two minutes that I ran this reel. I just want to kind of see what we're looking like here. And I can already tell a huge difference. As you guys can see there, the blades are definitely looking sharp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a little more pressure. I'm going to give it two clicks tight uh, to kind of bring that reel down a little bit more, uh, just so we can get a little more contact. All right, so again, because of the fact that I went nine <laughs> clicks to loosen this, that's quite a bit. I'm going to go ahead and tighten the reel down just slightly. I'm going to go two clicks to the right. Two. If my reel was really sharp to begin with, I don't know if I would be doing a second session here back lapping for another two or three minutes. But because the reel is in pretty bad shape, um, I don't know the last time it was sharpened. So I really want to go ahead and be aggressive with it. Um, and hopefully that way I can get a really nice finish on there as well as a very sharp edge, uh, which is ultimately what I'm looking for. So I'm going to back lap it again. Again, two clicks tighter uh, with the 80 grit compound. And we're going to go again for another two minutes. So now what I'm going to do is I'm also going to, I'm going to give it another two clicks tighter and maybe I'll go one click actually. I'm going to go another one click tighter here. So I'm going to go ahead and back up again for another minute or so. Um, and then afterwards I'll probably go ahead and apply the 120 grit. pretty good. I think I'm happy with that. So now the next step, I went ahead and did three stages of the 80 grit each time tightening the reel tight slightly, slightly, slightly. I'm going to do one last tightening and I'm going to go ahead and apply the 120 grit. And then at that point, I think we're going to be almost done with our back lap before I go ahead and rinse it off and test it out. All right. So we're going to go ahead and tighten this down one more time. Again, I'm just going to go one more click here to the right. Same thing on the opposite side, that way we keep it even. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and apply the 120. I think I'm going to go ahead and actually tighten it down one more time. Again, we were nine clicks off in the beginning. So now 
You know, we're closer to that halfway point. But I think that might do it for the adjustment. that is. I don't know got it cleaned off yet. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off some of this compound off here on the bottom of the bed knife. Definitely got a lot of compound down there. So, um, But just like with any back lap, you absolutely do not want to run your reel forward until you have it all cleaned up. Before we go ahead and do it to paper test, so let's go ahead and clean off the reel. All right, guys, so what I went ahead and did after I rinsed the mower, I actually did another back lap. I didn't put it on video, but I just feel like the reel still wasn't as sharp as I wanted it. So I felt like, you know, if I keep going again with another back lap, that'll probably help it out. And it definitely did. But, you know, even when tightening it down and really looking at the tolerance between the reel and bed knife, I felt like in order to get it to cut thin paper, I had to have that reel to bed knife adjustment really tight. And not that I couldn't spin the reel, but you really heard the metal, the reel contact. And I wanted it to be very minimal. As you can hear here, it's very minimal, if, it, if at all any. So what I've done is I grabbed a thicker piece of paper. Like I had this credit card offer laying around. And this is more like a magazine or business type paper. And then when I tried this piece of paper, I was able to get it to cut really nice. So as you can see here, it's like perfect. That's exactly what I want. That's good cut, good cut, good cut, and good cut. So, you know, I think I'm happy with that tolerance. Again, I always prefer minimal contact. You know, paper is generally much thinner than grass. So I think this tolerance will be good. And I really like the way this reel is feeling right now. You could barely hear it scraping. And I think that's where I want to keep it. Now, even when I try to run maybe a double sheet of printer paper, I'm still able to get it to cut as long as I spin the reel fast enough. Cut. At the same time, you know, I think uh, I prefer the looser tolerance in the thicker paper um, in order to get it to cut. Um, and I think I'm happy with that. Again, even if I use just a single piece of paper, double, I'm getting a cut, cut, cut. So I think I'm happy with that, you know, but it's where I want it. Cut, 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 butter baby. All right, so there you have it, backlapping of the Toro Greens Master 1000. Now, if you're still new to backlapping or still have a lot of questions on it, my recommendation is really to watch as many YouTube videos as you can on the process. But don't be selective necessarily of the manufacturer. Just watch as many backlapping videos as you can just for like the reasons I explained earlier in the video. The process isn't that different from manufacturer to manufacturer. And ultimately the main difference between each manufacturer is how you adjust the reel and bed knife. Once you figure that out, the backlapping part is a piece of cake. I may still choose to get a grind on it because there's no replacing a grind. A backlap will never do what a grind can actually do. And if you want to get it that super sharp blade, you got to get a grind on it. But at the same time, I just wanted to see what I could do to bring this reel back to life to ultimately tell me whether or not this is a mower that I should be keeping or something maybe I should be throwing back and selling on a secondhand market. And I'm so glad to see it's worked out as you guys saw in my video on the Toro Greens Master and it actually performing out on my lawn. So I hope you guys have found today's information useful. I hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, be excellent and party on. <laughs>